Setting expectations with your client is really important, especially on a wedding day as a wedding photographer, because we do manage and coordinate a lot of the stuff that's going to happen. We're with them the whole time. So having a solid game plan of what you're going to do at what time and what you can even fit in a day, how many hours are you going to take? So those are all things that are really important and things that you're going to cover when you're talking about the timeline consultation about what a month before the wedding day or at least six weeks. Uh, we're, we're about that window. I think at eight weeks, we reach out to them to book something in the next few weeks so that we can talk to them about um, what it is the wedding is going to look like really. And setting expectations is a big thing here, making sure that, you know, the clients understand what it is that we're going to capture and understanding what they want us to capture are two very different things. And obviously as professionals, we go to weddings all the time and we've seen all kinds of different scenarios play out good or bad. And we have a really good understanding about how much time things take, right? Just because you think, you know, you just want to save some money. So you want to cut time. It doesn't mean that things are going to happen faster. You know, uh, usually people are, are not, you know, sprinting from one thing to another. So it's just about understanding that flow and also the vibe I think that the clients mm. want to have on the day. And I think that that's an important conversation to have. Do you want your wedding to feel like a checklist in the sense of like, okay, now do this. Okay, now do that. Okay, now do this. Or do you want it to sort of have a bit of a natural flow? And that is something you need to be discussing with your clients through that timeline consultation, because that can make or break a day as well. Right. And, and I hope that people understand that it's not because we want to do these in the sense of, you know, we want to like make a checklist for ourselves. It's also so that the client understands what we're looking for and what we're trying to capture. And so they have a little bit more trust in that process yeah. too. The trust plays a huge part. And you build that up by sounding and by being the expert, right? Uh, there's nothing worse than a client that wants to get all this stuff captured, you know, booked you for eight hours or whatever it is. And then you get to the timeline meeting and you're like, well, I pieced everything together of all the important things, all the events you want covered. And it just doesn't make sense because of travel time, because of, you know, you don't have enough time between your ceremony and grand entrance or whatever it is, right? There, there's so many factors that go into each wedding and each wedding is so unique in that sense as well, that it's, it's hard to be able to like cookie cutter, do one, you really have to do case by case basis. And, and that's when you have to tell them, hey, you know, if you want all these things captured, you're either gonna have to add more time or you're gonna have to cut some events or we have to just shuffle things around so that it makes more sense. And we're not shy to, give them our opinion on like, here's how we can structure it. So that's a little bit better. Maybe it's like, instead of doing all the, the formal dances at the end of the night, we do them, you know, throughout dinner or even grand entrance into first dance or into a thank you speech right away. So there's a lot of ways to manipulate your timeline so that it can make a lot of sense in the amount of time that you want to capture all these events. Yeah. And there's nothing worse than feeling rushed. I feel mm -hmm. like, and you know, in the beginning, we really just wanted to capture as many things as we possibly could and just, you know, go overboard in the sense of like, okay, let's get this, let's get that. Like, you know, there's only one day, let's just get it all. But I think that more and more we're seeing it where clients really want to have that balance. They don't want to get to like 9 p.m. when we're about to leave and then finally be able to have a conversation with their family <laughs> for more than two seconds. And maybe part of that is just yelling at them to listen so that we can get through the photos faster. But the idea is that the timeline is really there to set expectations so that everybody's on the same page, that the couple can hopefully relax and just let you know the professionals do what they need to do. And it's also just a good reminder because like you said, every wedding is different. So what one client wants versus the other or what's important to one client versus the other is yep. going to be different, right? And for most, I would say there's quite a lot of similarity, I would say, in in the wedding days, but there are some that are completely different and completely outside the box. And so you just have to kind of roll with it when it comes to that. But I think the biggest thing is just setting the expectation about how long things actually take. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes we can make it happen. I mean, we've been proven wrong. We've had clients who are like, no, I want it this way. This is how we're going to do it, even though we've kind of said, but what if this happens, yeah. you know? 
And I think as our jobs as professionals is to expect the worst case scenario because we want to be prepared for it, right? Because again, this is in a live event. We only get one day to do it and we only get one shot to do most of the things that we're capturing on a wedding day. And sometimes I think people don't realize that like we only get one chance to do it. So <laughs> we're not trying to be, you know, like crazy about this. It's just that, okay, we need to have time to set up or we need to have time for this, or you need to have a buffer in your travel time because nine times out of 10, this time it is that we're supposed to leave. It's like, oh, somebody forgot this in the car or somebody forgot this here or somebody has to pee. Like <laughs> things just happen. And so we have to account for that, right? And it's kind of hard to explain it because all the clients seeing is dollar signs, right? Like, okay, well, an extra 15 minutes there, an extra 15 minutes there, an extra 15 minutes here. Okay, well, that adds up. And now it's like, I'm paying yeah. you for an extra hour of buffer time, but it's really, you know, it's not. It's just really to make sure that we have enough time between events. And then one way that we do that is we ask a lot of information from our clients before the meeting even happens. So we have questionnaires designed to tell them, here's what you can expect. And also you need to tell me all the things that are important to you, all the details you want captured. When are things taking place? Where are they taking place? Like, are you having a first look? Where's the ceremony? How long it is? Are you doing a group shot? Uh, there's so many factors that go into it, but there's like the four pillars I think is like, when are you arriving at the venue or like when is prep happening? But even then you can kind of figure that out when you reverse engineer when is dinner being served and when is ceremony happening? And then if you're having a first look, like where is all that happening, right? And then using travel time, you can kind of build a rough schedule. And then that's when you start popping in all the different events that they want of like, are they doing a bridesmaid reveal? Are they revealing with their dad? Are they doing like grand entrance into first dance? When are the speeches happening? When are the traditional dances happening? So all that to say that we, we do some homework before we get into this meeting. And, and then typically I draft a guesstimate timeline. And then when we review it on the call, that's when we can, you know, figure out the details. Usually I don't even know where they're getting ready yet. We have to confirm that if the, you know, if it's a hotel, what's the room number? Who am I calling when I get there? All these little details make a huge difference on the wedding day. Yeah, it really does when you have a, a solid plan and we know just when there's not really a solid plan or perhaps the clients are kind of pushing against what we're recommending, sometimes that can cause like stress on us too. And we don't want to feel stressed either. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's something that not a, a lot of people understand is that, you know, I kind of have a rule of thumb. If your wedding is all in one location or very close by, like I'm talking like five minutes <laughs> max, uh, driving perhaps between locations, then uh, like an eight hour day is probably enough to capture most things on your, on your wedding day. If it's more than that, or if it's a church, you know, when the ceremonies are longer, you definitely need to consider a 10 hour plan because the idea is that first of all, the church ceremony is going to be longer the you know, traveling between venues and, and places like that prep to a church and then church to, you know, reception, maybe even a different location for photos yeah, on the way, yeah. uh, you know, four different locations, all of that, you have to, uh, you know, add buffers into that just to be on the safe side because things happen. I mean, literally we're going into a wedding tomorrow <laughs> and just as an idea, like it's downtown and there's a race weekend happening and at the venue, they actually hold plays as well in as part of this venue. And so there's going to be two plays and there's also like two different races happening in that area where they're going to close down streets. That's just like a typical, <laughs> a typical weekend, right? And, you know, we've had it even where they've closed down highways, right? And so for us to get from one end of the city to another, yeah. almost impossible, right? And you have to account for things like that. So understanding all of that and just kind of going with a plan, especially as a professional, giving your advice at the end of the day, if they don't take it, <laughs> there's not much we can do. And we just hope that everything works out. I mean, it's not fun for us too, when we have to scramble or we're yeah. running around. Right. And we like, I think you probably hate it more because of all the setup that you have to do being a videographer, but it's, it's really difficult if the timeline isn't good, but when it's so good, it's almost, like we just had this weekend was so amazing because it was, yeah. 
everything went so smooth. We had enough time to do everything that we wanted to do to the point where we even looked at each other during the ceremony being like, wow, this is going so smooth today. And I, I love that. I, those are the days that I just, I dream about. And the cherry on top was, it was a 10 hour day. So it was a church wedding. Everything was super close proximity. So they probably could have done it all in eight hours or nine ish, just because the ceremony, yeah, it's a church. So it usually takes a little bit longer and there's a bit of travel time, but yeah, things just like didn't have any hangups at all. No one was late to anything. Everyone listened. That's also a big part yeah. of why <laughs> a day can go so smooth is if the bridal party is listening and you can get through bridal party photos in like 15 minutes if people aren't monkeying around, you know? Yeah. And also speeches, right? Like I think that's another thing is just like, you have to educate everybody. It's not just like the clients. Part of what we do when we build this timeline is we also build like the family photo list. And a lot of the pressures and societal norms that kind of come into that really do play, I would say, on the couple's overall feeling of their wedding day in, to a sense, because they're trying to please everybody. True. And part of this timeline meeting is to really say, okay, look, this is what's going to happen on the wedding day. This is where you're going to be parents. <laughs> it's usually the parents or grandparents or whatever that are giving a hard time to clients. And so what I find is really helpful is to say, okay, let's build your list. Let's build your timeline. And now let's talk to your family about it and make sure that they're all on board with this and that they understand where you're coming from so that they're not questioning or making things weird on the day, right? I think we want to try and avoid any kind of stress, any kind of drama, any kind of anything on the day of. Let's get all of that figured out beforehand. If mom and dad really want to have a photo with you know their siblings and that's really important to them, at least figure that out before the wedding day when it's just like this awkward, like, oh, but I really want this, you know? And and like the couple's not really on board and, and, and we're kind of trying to say, okay, like let's do the list. And then if we have time, we'll do this kind of yeah, thing. That's our go-to that's, usually. Yeah. That, that's usually my go-to because I want to make sure I get the list done first. And I try to play that middle person, but it's hard, right? You're yeah. trying to manage everyone's expectations. And I think at the end of the day, it kind of comes down to, I hate to say this out loud, but whoever's paying for it too. Sometimes like if, if the couple is paying for everything, Obviously, they should be able to call all the shots when it comes to this. But if parents are playing a role when it comes to the money, I think that also can kind of really play a role in sort of how things shake down. It's on like the a day. power struggle. No. Yeah. And just again, it's like, well, I'm paying for this, so I should get blah, blah, blah. Right. Well, then they should be on the timeline console. So. <laughs> and we do. I do yeah, get parents. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, we do get parents. And I, and I actually kind of like it because then they sort of see where we're coming from yeah. and what it is that we're trying to achieve. We're like the authority figure, right? So if they hear it from us, then they'll believe it instead of, you know, if your daughter is getting married and she's like, you need to do this. And she's probably like, well, she's probably just giving me a hard time because I'm the mom, you know, yeah. but really we told her that this needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And I will play the bad bad guy if yeah. I need to. Yeah, I'm me happy. too, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'll happily play the bad guy if I need to be. It's not obviously what I want to be doing. So if we can have those conversations beforehand, it's helpful. But yeah, those expectations can really cause a lot of anxiety and stress and it doesn't need to be that way. So having this timeline consultation with your clients, like if you're not having a timeline consultation with your clients, you're absolutely missing out. And yeah. I'm sure that clients are walking away from the wedding day feeling like something got missed or that they regret not doing this or whatever. Like if you just walked in and just showed up and was like, okay, do your thing. Yeah. Cause the majority of people get timelines from either their planner or like a coordinator and, and their venue. And that's really it. Um, unless they if, talk. If yeah. That. Exactly. And, and and that's usually centered around, okay, when are you getting married? When's ceremony time? And then like, what do we have to serve during cocktail? And then when is grand entrance? And then like, food. when are we doing the food? And then that's it, right? A lot of the planning on our side, I feel like, um, is the prep and what's happening before ceremony. Because there's so many events that you could do. And our, our, we have like checklists of like, here's all the things that we've seen typically at a wedding which ones do you want to do? And then when we get to the timeline consult and it's like, oh, you only budgeted an hour for prep, but you have 20 <laughs> events that you want to do. Like you want to give gifts to all your bridesmaids and groomsmen. You want to do reveals. You want to do pop champagne. You want to do like a cheers. 
you want to, there's so many things that you could add that like an hour on top of like, you need to get into the dress and then like do some shots like of your bouquet and details and this and that. And like, yeah. there's just, there's too much sometimes. Yeah. And, and that's the kind of stuff that if you leave it ambiguous or you don't have a good plan going into it, it could feel like you're asking the bride questions and like she doesn't really want to be thinking about that stuff on the day. And that, that plays a whole part into like the having a stress-free wedding day. Yeah. Or maybe like they didn't even know they could do those things. True. Right. And so they're kind of just like, okay, cool. Like looking at you, like, what do we do next? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like that looking at you, what do I do next? Like I, I hate that look. Oh, I hate it too. <laughs> I hate it. Cause I'm like, <gasps> what are we doing? <laughs> no, I obviously know, but it's just, you know, I, I obviously have had that conversation. We have a list. Um, but my biggest thing is just checking. Okay. Let's see the timing of things. Just because I put a time to it doesn't mean it has to happen like in that order mm. per se. And that's something too, when you're building a timeline, just because you put things in a certain order, they can move around, especially during prep and stuff like that. Um, but I really find that, yeah, we're trying to figure out what's important to them too. And I think that is probably the biggest thing that couples, I feel like maybe even we did at the beginning where we didn't really ask them what they wanted, like what was important, mm -hmm. you know, what was something they were looking forward to? What's the moments that they are really excited for us to capture. And that is something that we've really kind of pushed over the last few years is like, what's important to you? Is there stuff that we're missing on this list, mm -hmm. you know, of typical things? Because again, there might be stuff that people are thinking about that they want, but they haven't told us. Like the message under your, someone's shoe. <laughs> or inside the dad's jacket. Yeah, I always use that as an example of like, oh, like I wrote a message and it's like on the bottom of a shoe, but I don't typically photograph the bottom of shoes. No. Uh, you know, unless right. they're like going to kneel in a church and yeah, something, I don't know. Like, Last year, the big thing was like the tie. So it was like a picture on the back of a tie, of, a tie of like true. the kid's and the dad or something yeah. and then like a message or something like there there's always kind of like a new thing that comes in the big one that I've seen recently too is like dresses so like a painting or like a drawing of the mom and you know or the grandmas and their mm -hmm. wedding dresses I've seen all kinds of different variations and and again those are so beautiful and so sentimental and so perfect but you know, maybe we should add that to our list if there's going to be any kind of yeah, gifts to parents. Yeah, because we almost actually missed it last weekend. Mm -hmm. They were like, oh, the mom should open the gift. And I was like, what? This is happening? I yeah. don't know if it was even part of the, our, uh, I, I don't know, our but, prep. We should but she have mentioned it when added. we first got there, but then obviously. Yeah, exactly. Again, those are things that could happen. You get on a wedding day and you like have a plan going into it. And then somebody says, oh yeah, we like added or changed something. And unless like physically write it down somewhere, it's very, very easy. Once, once, things start going, it's hard to stop. It's like a snowball going down a hill yeah. and you're not really thinking about what somebody told you five minutes ago about like what you need to do in <laughs> 10 minutes. No, no, no. That you're just going yeah. camera settings, posing, mm -hmm. like what's next? Let's go. <laughs> yeah. And I think another thing to note is that just because you have this list, I don't want to, I don't want to preface this by saying that like essentially just because you have this list doesn't mean that you're going to absolutely get av everything on it. Mm -hmm. Right. If you, you can't like, we're going to do our best, we're going to do our best to get everything on it, but it doesn't mean we actually will. And I think having that conversation to know, okay, it, what's really, really important to you. Like, let's make sure that we're, we're doing those mm -hmm. things. Obviously other things can kind of, you know, change or shift or add. I think that's the hardest part is when they add something last minute and you're like, ah, I have to, you're like already thinking of what you're doing next, but then they want to add something and then you might forget what you're doing next. Yeah. That can sometimes be tricky, but yeah, just really, you have to have your head on a swivel when it comes to a wedding day and having this conversation ahead of time is so helpful. And it's also helpful. I think, you know, we've run into situations where we talked about this before where, you know, me and you couldn't make the wedding, right. Or something came up. And so having this full conversation with the client and having a really detailed timeline with all the things that you want captured, all of the important people you want captured in a list, it's going to make it really easy as well. If you, for whatever reason, can't make it now to yep. this wedding, yep. right? So not only now does your client feel really secure in knowing that they know what's happening, they have this also amazing plan that they can share with other vendors. They can share with their family and if something were to go wrong, they have it so they could share with the other photographer that may replace you on a wedding day. Yeah, it's a good point. The other vendors that are there, because that's 
a huge one too. You collaborate. It's a whole team effort on a wedding day. It's not just you and the couple and then like people doing other stuff. It's like everyone has their own little role. It's like we're all little ants, you know, doing our own little job, but all for the colony, all for the queen, right? And the queen on the day of is that the bride and groom. <laughs> so we're all working away, trying our best to do what we do best and having a solid plan of what we're going to do, especially like if there's a planner or coordinator, it's good for them to see that because then they can help you advocate for you. They can make things a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, it's a solid plan that we can share with everyone, like especially planners and venues, especially if you're like, oh, well, you, we need more time at cocktail hour. So we need to like push back dinner, like knowing is there a window for dinner that we can choose from? Is it from like six o'clock to seven o'clock you can start? Because that can also be limiting factors to when you're building a timeline is like, when can they have a ceremony there? When can they start dinner? Um, so that's also good information to know before the yeah. timeline meeting. The other thing too, which we've talked about numerous times, I'm sure is the, the timing of daylight, right? Just how much time there is because it's going to be very different between a wedding in June and a wedding True. in October or November where we have such a short window of daytime. So this, the kind of schedule that you're making for somebody is going to vary so much season to season, almost month by month. It's going to change pretty drastically, I would say. And for whatever reason here, the most popular time of year to get married is the fall. And I love the fall. I think it's beautiful, but I don't love that we have a lack of daylight. And I'm very vocal about that because I love spring. I love spring because there's just so much daylight. We have so much more variety. There's beautiful blooms out. Like anyways, I'm a spring girl. And so to have that amount of daylight just creates a lot less stress on a wedding day too. But it can also work the other way where we've been building timelines recently and they really want to do sparklers at night. Well, it doesn't get dark till past nine o'clock, right? That so is we, true, yeah. So yeah. like there, there is that one factor that can kind of play that is against you in that regard. But definitely those spring, like probably May to like August is probably like my favorite time of year because mm. there's just so much room for, for like if something goes wrong or it starts to rain or whatever, like we have time to go and, you know, do sunset or go outside or do, do things like at, in October it's dark at six. Right. So, <laughs> there's so no. if you want to do sparklers, uh, get married in October. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't want to do a first look, <laughs> anywhere from June to August, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the other thing too. I mean, we could go on and on about that, but understanding clients views on certain things, like whether they want to have a first look or not, like you can really educate them and saying, if you're getting married in November and you don't do a first look, like what time is your ceremony? Cause like <laughs> it might need to be earlier, right? It's not going to be at five, yeah. four o'clock. It needs to be at noon. <laughs> yeah, it needs to be pretty much. Uh, and, and those are the things you need to be very honest with people, or you're just going to have flash photos for everything basically <laughs> at that point. <laughs> just flash family photos. Huh? Flash everything. Yeah, It'd be flash true. like couple photos, bridal party, everything. What if it's dark, you're in a church and no flash photography is allowed? That would be rough. Just the grain. Yeah, just, just play with that black and white, baby. <laughs> Embrace the grain. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of cool things advancing with AI now, so it's pretty true, good. True, true. But uh, yeah, to run a whole gallery through AI, that would be interesting, actually. <laughs> Definitely run that uh, computer processing thingy really hard. <laughs> computer processing thingy. I'm not a tech person. Okay, we know this. One thing I think that... I really wish that we had sort of done sooner for whatever reason. I had it in my head that clients really are coming to us to sort of choose and do whatever it is, our style of photography that we want to be doing. And I'm not saying you have to go out there and do a different style if you don't want to, but what I found really fun and exciting, I would say, after doing the amount of weddings that we've done is trying stuff that's a little bit different, trying things that are different in terms of like, the style of photography or just the overall aesthetic of what it is that we're trying to, to capture. And there's a lot of trends that happen and they come and go, obviously, just as anything does in this world, trends change constantly. But the main thing I found that by doing this is that clients are really getting bombarded by social media, right? They're seeing ideas, they're seeing inspiration every single day, especially once they start watching a little bit of wedding stuff, like oh, yeah. they are getting pushed content like that, like crazy that wedding rabbit hole, 
they are in that hole. And maybe it's not so much the guys, but definitely the, the, the girls, I would say, especially if they're watching that kind of content. And one of the things that we added to this timeline consultation is telling our clients, okay, now it's time for us to have fun. So we've got all the important moments captured. Mm -hmm. We've got all the important family things captured, you know, all, everything that you want and envision for your day is there. Now let's add the fun. So one of the main things that I do with that is say like, let's do something that's different. Let's make your wedding stand out. Let's get people to talk about your wedding. Doesn't have to be expensive. You know, some of the ways we've done that is like, adding smoke bombs or confetti poppers or bubbles, bubbles, sunglasses, you name it, adding some kind of fun back into the wedding day. And then the second part to this is giving them a bit of creative control when it comes to the final images for up to a, a certain number. So I tell them a maximum of 20 inspiration photos that they can share with me. And the idea is that we can hopefully create something that's something that they've really been inspired by. Right. So, Essentially, it can be things like last year was like blurry photos or lots of black and white photos or direct flash. Um, or the sunglasses. Or that was the, a big one. Or the sunglasses, right? And so to me, by doing that, I got to really see what clients were really drawn to. Sometimes they would just send pictures that I had done, which is kind of nice. But sometimes they'd send me stuff where I was like, I would have never thought about yeah. doing this. And other times it was just like very basic. So it was kind of like an, uh, an alignment thing where I thought, okay, well, they really like my style. They're really in love with this. So I don't need to like do anything different. But the idea of doing like night photos with a flash and popping champagne and wearing sunglasses, yeah. like those are, those are fun things that you will probably never see very much on my feed, but it is stuff that we do. Right. And so that is kind of, and again, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I found it's been really exciting for clients to have that creative control again. Yeah, not only it's, it's like because the possibilities are endless, right? Of cool shots that you can do. It could either be shots done by like editing something or just events that are going to happen on the day, like the popping champagne, or it could be just the use of props like the sunglasses or yeah. uh, blurry or you know light streaks when you do slow shutter speed. And now I'm getting into like the technical things, but. Um, Yeah, we love getting that kind of inspo lately because it does take like a bit of creative edge off of like having to come up with everything all the time. It's easy when you get stuck in like, oh, well, I'm I'm thinking about like the same pose over and over. Like, what can I do different here? And you could be like, let's just whip out the inspiration that this client sent me and do something fun with them because it gives them, yeah, some of that control, some of that power. And they feel like, they're part of the experience instead of just being, you know, the, the, the client or the customer, they feel like they're part of like the photography and the team. Right. So, and then that has some value there. And again, like I was going through a gallery last night with a potential new client and I was showing them some of the shots and then some of them that came up, they're like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we really want those. And it was at a venue that we shoot at pretty often. And so it was just like, you could see how excited they were just at, you know, and to me it's like their basic, you know, run of the mill shot that we do pretty often at this venue in particular, but it's like, they were so pumped about it. Right. So making sure that maybe it is that them they're sharing this with you, that they're so excited about this one shot and imagine you didn't get it because you're like, oh, I shoot it all the time. Yeah, yeah, let's change it up. Let's change it up, right? But that's something they've been really looking forward to and then maybe on the day of, they don't even really remind you and then, you know, they finish the wedding day going, oh, well, we didn't get that shot that we really wanted, right? So the (laughs) idea is saying like, hey, you had your chance, right? I can't read your mind. You had your chance to kind of give me all of your input. If we didn't get what you want, but you didn't tell me about it, I mean, you can't really be mad at me, right? So again, it's just trying to make sure there's nobody walking away being upset for whatever reason, right? True. And and again, it's not because we expect people to love every single photo we give them. That is not the expectation here. It is to try and get as close as we possibly can that they love every single one. <laughs> I wish that people loved every single photo. Or I wish that I loved every photo that someone took of me. But it's just not the reality, right? Yeah, there's always going to be the favorites. You know? But the same with you. Like, do you love every photo I ever take of you? Probably not. That's true. Yeah. The, the one last thing I want to say about the inspiration photos is that it also take, it takes you out of your comfort zone. You may have to learn a new skill in order to pull off this image. And I think sometimes you can get into the, 
the mundane, like I'm just doing a wedding and like I've shot at this venue a hundred times. I know exactly where to go and at one point and like what to say. So it gets you out of that, that like routine and gets you thinking a little bit more and, and hopefully growing as a photographer, doing something different and challenging. And it, you might actually do one that you're like, you know, I might just add it to my regular yeah. arsenal of poses and, and, and things, um, for the future. And it pushes you creatively. And I mean, we got into this because we're creative people. Yeah, <laughs> we are, <laughs> we are creative people, but sometimes, yeah, it's, I feel like a lot of the times we go for that safe shot because we know it works. We know it looks good and we know people love it. Try to have like a small, even if it's 5% of the day is creative. Trust me, it's going to feel better at the end of the day. Because those could be like, it's it's always funny to, to see out of a gallery, you send them like 100 photos and you're like, I know which ones are my favorite. And then they pick their favorites and they're like not even a single one that you thought was your favorite. So it really does depend on, you know, what the client wants and what's important to them. Because if you sh are shooting weddings based on what you think is good, then you're missing out on a big piece of, of yeah. the pie. And every single time I do a fun, creative one, the client uses that photo <laughs> as what they're like profile, like pic profile and stuff. photo. Yeah. Like I see it posted on Instagram. Like it's always the creative one. Like I have one client that I, we shot their wedding two years ago. And every time I see her like pop up on my Instagram, it's like this one creative shot that I did this night shot, which I never, like I never would have imagined because her, her, her whole day was like very light and beautiful and pretty. But the night shot that I took of her is like still her profile photo today. <laughs> I actually just saw it. And I, it just reminded me that like, if I hadn't started pushing myself creatively, like that maybe that client wouldn't have gotten that shot. Yeah. It's probably one of her favorites. It would have been like a boring, pretty shot instead, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but that's what I mean. Like, and it almost always happens that way where it's this, the creative one, the one that I did a little bit different and they're like obsessed. So do yourself a favor and get creative. Get creative. <laughs> I hope you got something out of this episode here. Uh, bonus, we're going to be sharing our questionnaire that has a lot of information that you'll need from the client based on your, the timeline and on like family dynamics, which we found was really important as well, especially when you're talking about doing family photos and getting everyone involved. It's like, is there anyone that's divorced? Are there people that like step parents or has anyone been deceased? And is there any like family drama you need to avoid? Because there's nothing worse than like get the parents together for a photo and then like they hate each other. So <laughs> All of those things are really key to have when you're building a timeline meeting with a client because it'll make you look like a real professional, you yeah. know? I'm a big boy. <laughs> and this document is like seven pages long. It's fully editable and you can use it however you want. You can tweak it to whatever you want it to be. We've actually uploaded it into our CRM HoneyBook that we use all the time. So mm -hmm. shout, shout out, out to them. We'll put a link in the description so for, you can save some money if you wanted to sign up for, for HoneyBook. But yeah. we have it based on a questionnaire uh, automation that we send out to our clients. And we have it sent to clients usually about four months before their wedding and so we have it automatically doing that so that they're not missing a beat and you're not missing a beat. And then they have some time to look at it, fill it in, and then book in that that timeline consult, with, which is literally going to make or break your whole experience and your client's whole experience on the wedding day. So if you wanted this questionnaire that has all the information that you'll need, you can send it to your client. You can find the link below in the description and make sure it's, it's another time to talk about all the information they gave you. Like Bethany said, we send ours like four months prior to the wedding and then we meet with them about, you know, eight weeks, two months before the wedding. So you can even review the information they sent you in those two months because things could change as well. And then even from like the timeline consult, we always leave them with, hey, you should reach out to me again if anything changes between now and your wedding day because yeah. who knows. And we also usually use Google Docs. Like we don't, it's not complicated. We usually put a timeline in Google Docs. We have this questionnaire, um, you know, Docs. in Google Docs. And, the, and the, the reason we put it in there is then that way they can edit it as well so that they yeah. can go in. What we ask is usually the week of the wedding. Again, we have an automated email that goes to them. We say, hey, once everything is finalized and you feel good and you've reread the schedule, you know, send us Confirm a PDF. It. Yeah, Correct. send us a PDF version. The PDF is the is the final 
And that has really been so helpful for us as well. They send us the final email, they have our phone numbers, like they're ready to go and they feel really good about everything. Yeah. So download that. It's a free guide, free questionnaire. Um, it literally has every question that we ask our clients. We didn't hide anything. <laughs> no. And then, uh, yeah, the more information, the more expectations that you can set with your clients, the more nobody's going to be disappointed, right? And if you're really enjoying our content, we hope that you'll subscribe because we release a new episode like this every single week. You can also listen to us on our podcast as well. If you're not really the YouTube watching type of person, then you can actually listen to this directly anywhere that you listen to podcasts. So yeah, whether it be Spotify Apple. Spotify or Apple podcast. Yeah. Also, be sure to go and follow us on Instagram. We share a lot of behind the scenes on there and you can definitely get to know us a little bit through there. And hopefully you'll see the result that these questionnaires will give you on a wedding day, which is really just the full experience and your clients will rave about you. And that's really what this is all about. Every moment they never miss a beat Freezing time making memories that are oh so sweet